Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today I'm really excited to be here at the offices of Valdevis Partners and I'm really excited to meet with one of their partners, Alex. Welcome to The Startup Show. Hi, Cedric. Thank you. Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. I'm really excited to be here at the law firm Valdovis Partners, and it's super exciting to give a little bit of a different angle to the startup ecosystem here in Switzerland. And today I have the big pleasure to meet with Alex, who is a partner and part of the team of the Startup Desk. So it's really exciting. Uh, Alex, maybe give us a little bit of background of who you are. Yes, thank you, Cedric. Uh, very welcome. So my name is Alex Nikitin, 42 years old, partner at Valdovis, married and two children. I focus on uh, commercial law with an emphasis on the corporate and transactional work. I um, advise Swiss and domestic clients, predominantly corporates, but also uh, founders, investors, so natural persons. You are a lawyer and uh, you see a lot of startups. Maybe you can tell me what excites you, let's say, being a lawyer and watching all of these startups from this angle and helping them you know, grow over time. Yeah, I mean, it's a fascinating job to, to see and how startups you know, set up their own shop, how they develop, and then, you know, ideally and successfully sell, sell the startup at the company at the later stage. What struck me is, is it's a very dynamic young crowd, highly educated, in particular in Switzerland. Most of them are really successful. Uh, they tap the market, they find their niche. It's a pleasure and an honor to be part of that ecosystem. You know, as a lawyer, certainly, you know, providing legal advice, and that's my job. But it's, it, goes, it goes beyond just providing legal advice. In some extent, you know, our job is also being here kind of a mentor. It relates to a mentorship. They call us up and ask about things which are not necessarily just legal. It's just here challenging them also in, in, on commercial points, asking about strategy and so on. And, and I think being part of that development, being part of an important piece of the ecosystem around the startups, that's, that's really uh, fascinating. So maybe you can explain a little bit of the expertise that like, you know, Valdevis can bring to the table when you advise the startups in legal matters. I mean, Valdevis is a, is a rather young firm, has grown significantly for the last few years. We have now about 160 lawyers and tax experts, so it's the second largest law firm in Switzerland. Uh, we have offices not only in Zurich, but we have offices also in uh, all other important business areas in Switzerland. So Basel with Life Science Cluster, Geneva, Bern, Lugano, and also Lausanne. It's a so-called full-service firm, so we provide a very broad range of legal services. It's corporate, finance, tax, antitrust, arbitration, litigation, IP, IT, and so on. The other things, certain areas which we do not cover, like family law and so on. It's a quite a straightforward organization. We have partners, we have associates, and we have, of course, staff helping us. It's a fully integrated law firm. Mm -hmm. All of these branches, you know, are belong to one organization, Valdevis. It's, it's one IT system. Everybody has uh, access to, to the whole IT to the files, and uh, it's, a, it's a good, smooth exchange among the lawyers. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So you get to see a lot of startups. You get to see and, and, and interact with them. What do you see, uh, let's say, one of the challenges that like early stage startup face when they're founding or, let's say, the first time they come to approach you? What are, let's say, the biggest problems they have in the legal perspective? In many cases, while they have a, a certain idea about the business, they may even have a, a business plan, they are not entirely sure about the legal structure. So one of the first questions that we get to ask is, what kind of companies are available for this kind of startup? Uh, what are the key rules? What's the legal environment which they have to be to work around um, as a startup? So we help them and we assist them in, in choosing the right company structure and in addition, also the right arrangement among the founders. This is not a, a corporate law point, it, it's more contractual law. So they need, apart from having the right company, they need to have an agreement among themselves, which adds certain rules in addition to, to the classic corporate law rules. Mm -hmm. That's one challenge. First, I mean, getting the right structure. And then another one is the phase that follows the setting, the structure is the power within the company. They start as big friends, uh, have a great idea how they want to pursue the idea. And when it comes to who gets which power, who has which voting power within the company, intense discussions. Who would like to have a, a veto right? And, and why is that? Could that be detrimental to, to, to the company and its business? What about the, the people who finance the company? 
Uh, do they should they get special rights? Yes or mm -hmm. no? It's not the the business itself. They all of a sudden have to cope and handle okay, legal you know, legally related questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important that they find a, a solution around that so they can go on and focus on the business and, and pursue their business plan and not get stuck with, with these kind of questions. And that's right. what we're here for. You know, right. We show them, look, that's a good solution. That's a very common solution. Don't be afraid. That's how it works. Trying to explain you how it works so they feel comfortable with, with this kind of framework. Right. So maybe you can give like one or two like snippets of tips to like the startups that are watching out there. What is like, let's say, the first thing you should be doing when you start your own company? Getting the right idea. You see a lot of people that I think, and which they also later learn, they got the wrong business idea. Would like to find gold, but later find out it's more profitable to sell the shovel. Second, find the right people. It may be beneficial to start alone, and then when you reach a certain stage, you add other people, mm -hmm. good advisors, people who have access to the investor uh, field it's, and so on. Don't necessarily pick your, your closest friends, which you know from, from the kindergarten, because they may not be the best business partners. Yep. Um, and that is something which I you know, quite often see as a mistake which they make. You know, they learn later it was actually the wrong pick. When you see um, all of these startups coming to you, are there certain industries that you say like, well, this is probably trending at the moment, specifically coming from Switzerland? We have seen many fintech companies setting up their own uh, company lately for the last few years. Um, some, as we have just learned, you know, the other day have, were successful, but then failed big time <laughs> um, with, with layoffs, uh, big layoffs. We see still a growing number of uh, life science companies, biotech, medtech, pharma, spin off from the universities, mm -hmm. also. Uh, from the life science cluster in Basel, numerous, numerous uh, startup companies which are pursuing their, their business and, and, and try to be, become very successful. E-commerce has been, uh, you know, very strong. We have we advise many, many startup companies in e-commerce business. You know, trends go into all directions in terms of the industry. But I think those are sectors where we see a, a strong development for the last few years. Obviously, you don't have to mention any names of your clients, but maybe you have like an interesting story or like a funny story where you say like, well, we experienced with startups or something mm -hmm. that like you would say like a lesson learned or something, mm -hmm. a funny story you can share with me. We had once... We still have that startup, which was founded by a um, you know, smart guy from the western part of, of uh, Switzerland. And he found it uh, and contributed to a medtech device, a prototype. I was very proud of it. They had a, a financing round, other investors joining the, the startup, including one who was also very gifted. He had a very similar scientific background, joined the firm as a, as a CEO and lead investor, who as it turned out, kind of found in a superior medtech product, similar to the one that was uh, found by the founder, but, you know, generally speaking, it was clearly better. Mm -hmm. And there was a, you know, intense discussion internally, which out of the two products should be now further developed. And the founder would like to have his prototype to be, to be advanced because mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was like his baby. While the CEO along with the majority of the investors thought we should drop that first project and actually focus only on, on the second one, the superior one. And that is a very delicate situation right. because the founder had almost a majority of the shares. He could block important uh, steps like financing rounds and so on. So they, along with mediators, uh, outside counsel, they kind of had to convince him that he would leave the company and, and sell his stake to to one of the other shareholders, mm -hmm. and that was a, it. Was an interesting experience, not necessarily from a legal point of view, but also from an issue which arose uh, sometime when the when the company was already founded and had become very personal, mm -hmm. and then may have led to to a, you know a disaster if they had not found a solution. For sure. So they found a solution. The company is is is, is uh, progressing. There's it's really a great story. To wrap up the show, I always like to get like some tips for uh, students who are, let's say, aspiring lawyers who say like, I would like to become a corporate lawyer or a startup lawyer. Uh, maybe you can give them one or two points of advice of like how to get, let's say, to this chair to be interviewed on the show. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, there must be some core interest in, into law and, and, and dealing with people, dealing with, with, with problems, you know, taking the advisory role. I mean, formally, you have to go to, you know, to, to, to law school, graduate, take the bar exam. You may write a PhD, the master, master degree abroad, um, which I did. You need to have some interest, really, some fascination, actually, in, 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 this, in this job to not, not only be the master of the law, Know, know the law, you know, have the, the necessary educational background, but also be interested in, into, into the business of your clients. What do they do? What are their challenges? Um, who, who is around? What other competitors are around? To follow the story, you know, and, and uh, don't forget the history of these companies. That's, sure. that's, that's very important. And it's part of our job. And I think it's a very interesting job. It's a, I would never leave, leave that job. It's, <laughs> it's, I'm independent. I'm, I, I'm not an employee. I, I, I kind of can follow my instincts and, 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 and you know, have a, have a great collaboration with, with my clients, with sure. st including startup clients. Sure. I guess passion in the law firm, that's also very important and we're doing this job. Alex, thank you very much for taking the time sure. and giving us some insights into the law firm. Thank you very much, everyone out there who was tuning in today and watching this episode. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great day.